uh, a surprise to absolutely no one. Uh, CBS exclusive, U.S. Marine accused of kidnapping child from Afghan couple. Turn now to the story fire off about my the future of a three-year-old girl quick. rescued after a military raid in Afghanistan. She's now at the center of court battles here in the U.S. Two families say that they want to care for this little girl, this child known as Baby L. There's an Afghan couple now in the U.S. who say that they are the child's rightful family. And they accuse an American Marine and his wife, who have adopted the girl, of unlawfully taking custody of her. Only on CBS Morning, senior investigative correspondent Catherine Herridge spoke to the American couple just two days before a Virginia court said they couldn't speak to anybody, placing a gag order on the families prohibiting them from talking about the case. So this is their first TV interview and for now their only conversation about it. Catherine, good morning. Good morning. This story has an incredible number of layers, but at the heart of it, there are two families who truly believe they are doing the right thing when it comes to this child's future. Show us how strong you are. You With go. training wheels and some encouragement, she looks like any other three-year-old learning to ride a bike. But this child's story is anything but ordinary. It begins on the battlefield in Afghanistan in September 2019, when a counterterrorism team zeroed in on this remote compound. Baby L was severely injured in the raid, and her parents were killed. She was roughly two months old. We met resistance almost immediately. This former Army Ranger, who we'll call David for security reasons, was on the mission, which combined U.S. and Afghan forces. He spoke exclusively with CBS News on the condition we shield his identity and change his voice. In this firefight, you hear the sound of a baby crying. Yeah, it's almost a natural response is that you're going to hear that and uh, want to do something about it. An unclassified military report reviewed by CBS News found the child was likely the orphan daughter of an al-Qaeda foreign fighter who entered Afghanistan from a neighboring country. Uh, the baby's right here in this corner. David says partner Afghan forces then suggested throwing the baby in a nearby river. They wanted me to throw the baby into the river because they believed that she was a terrorist. Six additional Army Rangers what? also on the mission backed up David's account, telling CBS News some Afghan forces suggested drowning or abandoning the baby to die. As a soldier and as a new father, what was going through your head? It was definitely not an option. The Army Rangers made a car seat from scraps and medical equipment. A bandage wrapped around her head en route to a U.S. military hospital is one of her first known pictures. So you have a lot of severely injured Rangers, but they're going around that site and they're trying to fashion a car seat? Must have been a lot of dads on that operation. There's a lot of dads on that operation. At a military base, Baby L was treated for fractures to her leg and skull and second degree burns on her face and neck. I know exactly where I was. Joshua Mast, a Marine lawyer, was deployed to Afghanistan at the time. He wasn't on the raid, but says he heard about the child from his boss. He's like, what the heck are we gonna do with this baby? I'm like, what baby, sir? It's like, oh, the operators pulled a child off an al-Qaeda objective. It was really bad. When Mass learned about the baby, he called his wife, Stephanie, who was in the U.S. raising the couple's sons. The moment when we, we heard about her for the first time, it wasn't a difficult decision to make. It was just there was an innocent child caught in an unfortunate situation, and uh, we wanted to see if there was anything we could do to help, and we were able to. This photo shared with the Mass is from a nurse's station. I would say that's one of my favorite photos of her because, again, like behind her, there's a, you know, combat trauma center, right? And the, like a real military hospital where service members are coming in from the war in Afghanistan. And you got this little girl that they've taken care of. And I don't know, it is, it's everything good about America in that photo. As the child was treated in a military hospital, the mass began the process of officially adopting baby L in the U.S. Meanwhile, the Afghan government and the International Red Cross searched for Baby L's biological family in Afghanistan. According to court documents, the baby was eventually given to an Afghan couple. The then Afghan government determined the husband to be the baby's first cousin. The couple asked to remain anonymous due to safety concerns for themselves and their families in Afghanistan. <laughs> As the Taliban took control of Afghanistan in 2021, the Afghan couple agreed to bring the baby to the United States. In a federal lawsuit, the Afghan couple claims the mass encouraged them to bring the baby to the U.S. solely for medical care, but never told them they had already adopted the baby. Were you clear with the couple about your adoption? Yes, because 
we're explaining substantively that we have to treat her like our other children in a, in a way that, to communicate the clearest we could mm -hmm. that, hey, we're responsible for her under U.S. law. What the f I Give the baby back. What is going on? That's insane. Are they just, are they on national television saying, no, this is like our baby now because it's a better place for this baby to grow? Because of the conditions that we directly cultivated in the baby's actual, like, you know, normal habitat environment. This man is saying finders keepers to a child. This is not the first time. The young Afghan couple raised at the airport and couple clutching their baby girl close amid the chaos. No, this is the, this is the same story. I mean, this sounds like everything. This sounds like everything that you've heard so many times over because it's the exact same. This is a part of plunder. This is a part of imperialism. This is a part of like colonialism. It's just, it has happened so many times and it will continue to happen. But on the word adoption, sure. did you use the word adoption? I don't think I used the word adoption. Mm -hmm. um, we were trying to explain again in a way that they would understand because they don't have a concept of adoption. We didn't use the word adoption because it was kidnapping. Adoption in Afghanistan. Over a three-month period, CBS News reached out to the Afghan couple for an interview. Their lawyers declined, most recently citing the court gag order. As Kabul fell, the Afghan couple and the baby were evacuated by U.S. forces, first to Ramstein Air Base in Germany, where the mass met them at a refugee camp. Baby L was now about two years old. When you found her, did you... Bro, bring the parents to the united states of america right now and give them the kid back what the f what is happening give the cousins the child back i don't give a f the legal guardians the cousin the legal guardian the child should be the one who raises the child what the f is going on immediately recognize her no not at all i it was i was shocked she didn't look like the child in the hospital in the hospital she had big brown eyes big smile and when I saw her she had furrowed brow and she was kind of scowled and closed off and it wasn't until I saw the scar on her leg because she has a very distinct scar and I was like it's her it's really her that's where the fight over this child really begins tomorrow in part two we'll show you the chaotic moment the child was transferred to the mass the Afghan couple says they did not know the mass had officially adopted the baby in the U.S and were blindsided when the mass took custody. Plus the surprising DNA evidence and why the U.S. government is taking such a strong position in this case. It seems like, Catherine, you could say a lot would be lost in transition and with culture and- Why are they so- What? Bro, this is- this has to be like reinforcing the narrative that like the, our enemies, our enemies, uh, even if they are civilians, they're not enemy combatants, like they're not human. They're subhuman. And therefore, they don't have the normal feelings that a human being would have, like, uh, you know, the loss of a child by an invading force. Like, you can't be this callous when talking about this kind of thing, unless you just, like, they're talking about this like it's a heartwarming story when it's a, it's kidnapping. What the f I mean, this is and wild. with how they do things there. Do you think the couple really didn't know that they were giving the baby up for adoption? On the question of adoption, the simple explanation in Afghanistan is that it's much more of a guardianship huh. system. I mean, this is probably one of the most complex investigations I've ever taken on. And it's got this incredible emotional overlay. Right. And then you've got the Defense Department, the Justice Department, the State Department, the Taliban, all weighing in about the future of not only this child, yeah. but both of these families. Yeah. Two households saying, we're in a position to love this child, That's we right. want this yes. child, and two countries saying, you know, this is the best place for her. Yeah. Yeah, wow. I am really looking forward to part two. Yeah. Thank Catherine, you. thank What the f Bro. Bro, this is bananas. I mean, I, I, what? This is unhinged for even mainstream media. I, I've never seen, what? Am I crazy? I feel like I've eaten crazy pills. They are talking about this like it's a documentary, like, or a movie. It, it, this is real life. You're covering a kidnapping of a baby from the brutal invading forces. Now, Turkey's president.